Hi there, folks. I'm Matt Gemmel. Uh, you can find my blog at mattgemmel.com. That's M A T T G E W M E L dot com. My business site is at Instinctive Code. Uh, in my, my copious free time, I quite often sketch and sometimes build user interface concepts, particularly for touchscreen devices, just to see if they actually work in real life. The vast majority of them only exist as private tools for my own use, but I made one recently that I thought you might be interested in seeing. Now, the reason for this particular one is that there's one annoying thing about desktop user interfaces that has also unfortunately appeared on touchscreen devices, and it's the verb then object style of interaction, or what I always call ink dipping. That's where you pick a tool from some globally positioned uh, piece of interface, like a toolbar or a floating palette or something like that, and then you go to where you actually want to work with the tool. You've got this back and forth. There's a lot of unnecessary hand movement, whether it's just your hand on a touch screen or a mouse or whatever on the, a desktop machine. And it, it kind of breaks the idea of direct interaction to a certain degree. So I was thinking about this, and on a touchscreen device, you've often got a, a simplified interface with very few options or commands or, or tools or whatever. And I was thinking in that context about how to improve interaction, particularly in canvas-based applications. And what I mean by that is apps where you've got an area and then stuff that you put on there and manip manipulate it. We're talking about drawing and painting, charts, diagrams, and all that kind of thing. And it occurred to me that you very often, particularly on touchscreen devices, have fewer commonly used tools or commands than you have fingers on both hands. So there's an obvious, you know, kind of interface that we can implement to help us with that. And I made a prototype. So let's have a look at it. I call it Finger Tools, although I'm not completely married to that name. Maybe it's touch tools, maybe it's tool glove or, or something around there, but you, you, you get the idea. I certainly think of it as finger tools privately. So here's how it works. This is a canvas with uh, my business logo on it. There's no toolbar or floating palette or anything like that. And this is a very, very basic, incredibly crappy shape drawing application. Uh, the actual shape drawing app itself doesn't matter. It's really just a harness to show this type of user interface. So there are plenty of rough edges there, but it, I mean, it's the work of a, a couple of hours one evening. So try and, you know, try and keep that in mind. Say I want to make a shape. What I do is I lay my fingers on the screen and I get these tools attached to my fingers. I've got the cancel one down there on my thumb. If I pick that by making it be the only remaining tool when I release, then nothing happens. So that's a safety margin. But what I can also do is I can pick one of the other ones, say a rectangle, move to where I want it. Perhaps I want a rectangle out here. And there I go. I get a rectangle. You trigger the tools by touching and holding for a certain period. The reason the hold is there is so that you can still interact with the, the canvas normally without always triggering the touch tools. But you can also, if you interact with multiple fingers, it will trigger them immediately. So maybe I want an ellipse, perhaps a triangle down here. Maybe I want some text. I've got a text tool. Shove some text over there. So it's quite, it's quite natural and immediate. I can just interact where I want stuff to be. There are extra options if I put another hand down. Maybe I want to change the colour of something. In this sample demo, all this does is it makes things orange, which is a particularly unpleasant colour. But uh, in, a, in a real application, you'd presumably have a picker of some kind that would spawn. I've got delete and delete all tools, which work as you would expect. So it's, it's pretty nice. It works fairly well. You could, of course, change the triggering mechanism to suit other situations if you want to have multi-touch input not automatically triggering the tools. You want it to do something else first. That's fine. On iOS, this is actually implemented as a gesture recognizer, so you can make it depend on other gesture recognizers first failing 
to recognise their own gesture, like pinches or swipes or whatever, pretty easy to do. A, there are a couple of nice features that are consequences of how this is implemented. The first thing is that these tools appear in order of priority. I arranged them this way so that the most commonly wanted or needed tools would attach to the fingers that are physically easiest for me to use. Because they appear in that priority order, this is a naturally ambidextrous interface. You just use whichever hand feels most natural to you and you get your tools attached to that hand and your, your secondary hand, whether that's your left or your right, then gets the lower priority tools, which is kind of nice. You can also swap tools because if I lift fingers, it fills in the tools in priority order. So you can see if I lift away rectangle and ellipse, rectangle, then ellipse, or rectangle, then ellipse. Now a consequence of that is that if I want to use the text tool, which right now is attached to my pinky finger, I can lift away ellipse and text, put my pinky back down first, and then text obviously attaches to my index finger, which is physically a lot easier for me to move around. I'm, I find it much easier to move my index finger with precision, keeping it against the screen, than my pinky finger. And those are just consequences of the fact that tools appear in a priority order. It's a fairly nice interface. Uh, I find it pretty natural to use. It's fairly immediate. It lets me stay where I'm currently interacting. If I want to build up some shapes down in this corner, then I never really need to go away from this corner to do that. I ju really just wanted to show it to you, uh, maybe give you some food for thought. There are obviously some rough areas, some uh, things that still need to be thought about. Uh, for one thing, keeping your fingers pressed down all the time is physically difficult. I would probably want to implement a system whereby if you accidentally release all of the tools, you might actually you might have a, a sort of brief period to catch them again before committing the action to the application. But it's pretty promising. I was surprised how well it actually worked when I implemented it and uh, created the demo application. Things work so well on paper or in your imagination, but when you create them, there are often obvious problems. This is actually a fairly nice way to interact with canvas-based applications and give your fingers kind of superpowers uh, without having to have tool palettes or menu systems or that kind of thing. That is finger tools or whatever you'd like to call it, and I'm Matt Gemmell. <laughs>